that again, verse 1.
have it's the praises of his children amen so we're going to praise him this morning hallelujah hey sing a church oh my god in you i put my trust in this place Lord God Father God have your way with us this morning you know brothers and sisters um, I don't know it was about 6.30 when we received a call saying that our beloved school was vandalized amen and so it's just one of those things where it just woke me up this morning and, and I thought Lord what's going on you know and I just felt a sense in my spirit a sense of rejoice 
And I'll tell you why, brothers and sisters. The Lord gave me the word, and I believe the word of the morning is offensive. Everybody say offensive. 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 And I said, okay, what are you trying to tell us, Lord? Why offensive? And so he, he showed me this passage. It comes from Psalm 37. And I'm going to read a little bit of it, but it says, Do not fret because of those who are doing evil or be envious of those who do wrong for like the grass they will soon wither like gra green plants they will soon die away trust in the Lord and do good dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture hallelujah so i said lord what do you mean offensive now offensive in a sense that that we're making trouble for the enemy amen and oftentimes the prayer team and and us as a pastoral staff we come together we pray together and they're always talking about how we're being offensive to the enemy Okay, now we don't ever want to be offensive to human beings, amen? Because that, that thought came to me too, is like, as a church, did we do something offensive to the people out in the community? And the Lord said, no, but you are being offensive to the enemy, amen? Because all we do, brothers and sisters, is we lift up the holy name of Jesus Christ, and he brings all men to himself, hallelujah. John 12, 32 says, as we lift up the name of Jesus... He will draw all men to himself. And so that's what we stand on today. Hallelujah. Offensive. We're being offensive to the enemy. Why? Because we also have our senior pastor here and the first lady of New Hope Central Oahu. Amen. And they're going to be talking about marriages today. Marriages. Now I realize not everybody in the room is married. But brothers and sisters, marriages... The, if you really break it down, because when we came here, Lord, right? When we came here, we prayed, Lord, if you would allow us to be a community changer. Yes. Amen. That we would, if you could transform the community, we pray, Lord God, that would you do that through us? One family at a time. Yes. Amen. Doesn't matter if you're a husband and wife, but it, family units. And I was just talking with my brother Chris about that. That families look different, yes. right? But it all begins with a foundation of marriage. Amen. So praise the Lord. He had it all orchestrated. He had it all planned out. Amen. Amen. And as we sing this song this morning, we are anchored to the word of God, led by his spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I have to catch my breath. And in the glory of your presence, there's truth and liberty. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I see your voice within me, and you ask of me, my Lord, to give of your endurance. As your spirit leads me on And in victory Abide in me The Father, the Son And Spirit As we're anchored To the Word of God As your spirit From the vine we know to bloom and grow as we live from glory to glory.
Sing the chorus again. church would you say amen to that with a clap offering to the lord this morning hallelujah lord we say amen to that lord you have been go ahead church extend that clap offering to him this morning you have made us a church anchored to your word and led by your spirit anchored to your word led by your spirit hallelujah hallelujah we welcome your presence here, Lord. We welcome your presence in the church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Would you take the hand of someone right next to you? And Lord, we just want to pray that, Lord, over ourselves this morning and just declare what you have done, just the amazing work that you have done to make us a church anchored to the Word of God and led by the Holy Spirit that in this church you abide. Thank you, Lord, for your presence, your Holy Spirit dwelling within each one of us and each one of us that has put their faith in you, Jesus. Each one who has put your faith in Jesus now has the presence of Jesus dwelling within you. Lord, we just dwell on that thought this morning as we think about families, as we think about fathers, mothers, husbands, wives, and children. Lord, in the very center of the Christian family is the presence of the Holy Spirit. You are the one who leads the dad, leads the husband. We just welcome you to do that right now, God. 
for every father, every husband in this room, that you would engage that man with a real sense of your leading in his life. We pray, Lord, that he would know deep down in his spirit that your spirit is with him, will never leave him, never forsake him. For every wife, God, for every mom, that your spirit is with her. For every child to live under the covering of people who are anchored to the word and led by his spirit. And so they prosper, they flourish. We just declare that for every family in this church and also for this community, Lord, in Jesus' name. Over the North Shore, we pray for your presence to come in such a way as to get a hold of the family. Lord, that's at the heart of what's going on in society today, Lord. The enemy is going after families, confusing people as to what family is. So we no longer understand what family is from a biblical point of view. And so people are making stuff up and it's bringing tremendous confusion into the schools and into the public. And so God, this is where the church has to step up, Lord. And so we do, in Jesus' name, today to declare once again from your word what a family is and also to declare that we are a people filled with your spirit to fulfill what your word says. And so we thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you, Lord. Today is also about baptism. Lord, you're baptizing us into a new chapter as a church. Lord, you're baptizing us, which is, a, which is an initiation. In your spirit, everyone just say initiation. There's an initiation happening. There's a new immersion that's happening. Say that in your spirit, an immersion. That's where you're going you're gonna to soak in the presence of God. Soak in his word as he speaks to you and soak in his presence. And that will transform you into a different kind of person. You will not be the same. You will not be the same from this forward on, from this moment on, from this day onward. You're going to be a different kind of dad, a different kind of mom, a different husband, a different wife, and a different son, a different daughter. Because of the spirit of the Lord who will dwell within you and lead you and guide you and empower you. And so, Lord, we want to thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, that you give us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. So we're not a people who are looking for a blessing or praying to receive one. Because, Lord of Jesus, because of Jesus, we have already received every spiritual blessing. And so we want to be a people that live from the blessing, that live from a new place in the Spirit. Open heaven exists over you in Jesus' name. Wherever you go, there is open heaven. You don't have to pray for one. There is one because of Jesus. Because of Jesus, you already have every spiritual blessing. You have His presence. And so we're praying that the Lord would just activate that authority, activate the gifts, activate you to live from that place, from the place of having already received every blessing conceivable in the heavenly realms. We pray this for this one to our left, Lord, this one to our right, for this one in the middle as well. In Jesus' name, and all God's children said, Amen, 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, North Shore. Good morning, Haleiwa. Good morning, Wailua. It's great to see you all. If we haven't met, I'm uh, Mike Colombo. And I'm the uh, senior citizen pastor of uh, New Hope Central Oahu. And um, I just want to say, first and foremost, just how proud I am of all of you and of your pastors. Would you say mahalo and thank you to Pastor Glenn back here, Pastor Teresa? 
These are two of our finest. Uh, and um, we're blessed to be able to send them to the North Shore to be a blessing to the North Shore. Say thanks also to the worship team, their family, Sharice, doing an outstanding job this morning. And would you say thanks also to the whole team that they lead that's here at uh, New Hope Haleiwa. An amazing team back there. You see them all back there. It, I, I tell you, it's been a while, uh, maybe a few months since I've been here. And I like how you decorated the place. It looks really, really good. It looks really awesome. I love that decor over there and this setup over here. Great job, you guys. You guys did really, 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 really great. It looks really beautiful. I love it. It feels, it feels different. It feels really, really different. It, feel, it feels like home. I feel like I should get a Starbucks or something and just have a cup of coffee, just relax or whatever. Well, would you take a moment right now and um, uh, welcome each other as well and just go ahead and extend the love of Jesus to each other. Go ahead and do that. My name is Creighton, and again, it's an honor to uh, every month to come up and uh, share the weekly uh, news with you. Uh, so the first thing I kind of, again, uh, wanted to uh, in, uh, acknowledge anyone who is new to our family. Uh, we have a connection card. Uh, we certainly like to uh, connect with you. Uh, the whole point of what God has put upon our hearts, right, is not only connect with the Lord, but also to connect with one another, right? It's all about relationships. So we'd like to get to know you better. So if you are new to our family, yeah, please take the opportunity for, to take this one piece of paper, a quarter sheet, yeah, and put your name and contact number on here, and someone will get a hold of you uh, to do that connection. And as you uh, already know, uh, on the front of the sheet is a list of all our ministries, and uh, if the Lord's put upon your heart uh, to go ahead and give back to the community, uh, go ahead, please annotate that also. And then also on the back of it is a praise and prayer requests. Uh, so as we know, the life is full of challenges and tribulations, and uh, God uses that to teach us and transform us. And so as we go through our life and meet these challenges, uh, uh, we may need a little extra prayer. from, And we have a marvelous uh, prayer team from all three campuses to do that praying with you. And then, of course, when God does take you through the challenge, right, there's always that praise and we always want to give praise and glory to his holy name. So please annotate that. And as you know, the last block on the bottom is uh, comments. Uh, if something that, uh, and we have Pastor Mike and his first lady Mona here. Uh, if there's something that in the message today that hits your heart that you wanted to acknowledge, yeah, do write that down because uh, our speakers uh, who share the message yeah, do want to hear from you uh, what, 
uh, meant a lot to you, or, or maybe even if you have a question about something that was said. So please take that opportunity to go ahead and annotate that. Uh, also, as we are all about connection, back there, as you know, is a connection table or connection area. And I kind of want to make sure that you understood that there's, a, there's three tables that we have up there. The first table is called the seeds table. Uh, that's for all the, that we have, like the Bibles, uh, calendars, uh, the things that, you know, you know what, it makes great gifts for birthdays and for graduations. So please take the opportunity to go back there and take a look and, and peruse through the, through the items we have back there. Uh, the other table we have is called the missions table, and that's where you got Ho'ala Napua, right, uh, saving the children from uh, sex slavery. Uh, you also had uh, Compassion and also Village of Hope. So take a look at, at those informations of back there. And then the third is the ministry table, and that's where we have the Transformation Academy. Uh, and all the courses that are lined up, that's all coming up, it's marching on down, right, we're, we're about ready to start. Uh, so we take an opportunity to go ahead and peruse through that. And uh, if you haven't already looked, there's back there uh, this thing called the personal inventory. Uh, so when you fill this out, it kind of points you to the courses that you may need in your spiritual life you know, to get closer to God or, or understand who actually God is. So take an opportunity to go fill this inventory out, and that will kind of lead you uh, toward what courses uh, will best fit your spiritual growth. And then also, uh, if you see Rich Fuel back there, yeah, this application is online. And he's got his laptop there ready to sign you up <laughs> today, right after service. So if you have this sheet and you fill in all those things and it points you, oh, I need Transformation 102, then go ahead and go back to Rich and say, Rich, I need Transformation 102, and he'll put you right down for that class. Okay, so that's uh, back there at the... Uh, mission uh, ministry table and then as you know uh, at the back of our all our bulletins uh, what's what you have inside is for all three campuses and then what's on the back is for Holly Eva specifically uh, and I'll cover some some things that uh, we're going to talk about uh, on the back of the bulletin as you know this is graduation uh, month I guess May and June uh, so a lot of graduates are coming up so if you've got uh, someone who is graduating like Alyssa <laughs> Hi, Alyssa. Well, if you got somebody who's graduating, right, please annotate uh, who that person is by name, the school they're graduating from, and most importantly, what your plans are after you graduate by May 31st. Okay, so we need that information because we'll be celebrating uh, their graduation on June 7th, yeah, Sunday, June 7th. Uh, and then as you heard Pastor Glenn talk about, we unfortunately... Uh, fall victim to the world's values, I guess you might call it, but the school, as you heard, uh, was vandalized. And so a lot of the uh, water spouts were broken off. Uh, we had to shut the water, so the two bathrooms that we have back here for your use are no longer working. Uh, but we did open the bathrooms for ch in Children's Ark and also in Toddler's Ark. The, the ushers can show you where, the, where those are. So if you have a need to go to that bathroom, and now that I said that, you probably all have that need. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but do, there are available, and we also have an overflow bathroom on Building G. Uh, if those two are too busy, uh, we can always go back there to Building G. Um, so anyway, unfortunate, it's very unfortunate that to happen. Uh, but as you know, on the back of uh, the sheet, there are two main classes that we're giving here for our family. Uh, the first one's called the New Believers class. Uh, as you've already heard before, when Jeff was up here uh, the weekend before, uh, it's about those who have, have just accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. Uh, but what exactly does that mean? Or it's for those who are, you know, I've been thinking about it, but I'm not really sure. I have some questions. It's for those folks, right? So both Jeff and Cindy, Jeff and Cindy, raise hands. Raise hands. Jeff and Cindy. Oh, I'm sorry. Carl and Marie. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Carl and Marie, raise hands. All right, new believers. <laughs> Redirect attention to Carl and Marie, new believers class. Um, that's starting next Sunday, May 24th. Right, we'll be in toddlers, toddlers arc room. Okay, that'll be right after service. Now, for Jeff and Cindy, we have Grow with NHCO. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have accepted... <laughs> If you have accepted uh, 
NHCO as your family, as a church family, what is it all about? What's the mission of, of NHCO? What, what values do we hold up here to? And uh, so this is a great opportunity for you to know what that is. When you say you're, I'm part of New Hope Central Oahu, what does that exactly mean? And through both Jeff and Cindy, uh, you'll get to know that. And that starts on Sunday, May 31st, which is the following Sunday, May 31st. Okay, and as you know, uh, Pastor Mike mentioned about being baptized. So this is baptized, baptism day. Uh, all three campuses are meeting at Ali'i uh, Beach Park to go for baptism. And even if you've been thinking about it, but man, you didn't have the opportunity to write it down, to annotate that I wanted to be baptized, uh, it's never too late. It's never too late. So if you think that, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and declare to the world that I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I'm going to die to myself and come up as reborn, rebirth, as a new person in Christ. If that is what you decide today, and you feel that uh, you haven't put in the paperwork, don't worry about it. Yeah, just come on down. Uh, what time is it? One o'clock? 12.30. Come on down, 12.30 to Ali Beach Park. Let Pam know or let Pastor Glenn or Pastor Teresa know and be all, you will be added right in uh, to everyone else. So please, if you've, if you've given that some thought, uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, and that's about it. So if I could get my ushers uh, to come forward. So if you're new to our family, yeah, don't feel obligated to give. Uh, this is a continuation of our offering and our worship. Uh, but receive this service yeah, as something new, uh, a gift from all of us to you. So if you could bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for all that you've done for us, each one of us. I thank you for your presence and the fact that your son Jesus continues to walk in front of us, clearing away obstacles as they come against us, protecting us from the attacks of the enemy and coming to us when we feel hurt and sad and when our hearts are missing something. Your spirit continues to fill us with your love and your presence and your power. And Lord, everything we have is through you. And Lord, we give back to you uh, just a little bit of what you have given us so that we can continue to steward what uh, you've given us to expand your kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven here on this earth. And so, Lord, I ask and pray that you bless each one, Lord. Bless the hands that give this offering and also the hands that steward it, Lord, that it is through your will that all things will be done. And all God's children said, Amen. Can we give Creighton a hand clap for the wonderful work that he's been doing behind the scenes as well. Thank you, Creighton. Um, I wanted to say a few words um, before we invite up our senior shepherd and our senior shepherdess. Um, you know, whenever I get around people, I like to share the story of how Teresa and I first met. So just a, just a few minutes. I'm not going to take too long, of course. Um, but just a few minutes of how we met Pastor Mike and how our New Hope journey came to be. Uh, back in 2001, right, um, you know, we were attending a church downtown, and so we were living in Wahiwa at the time. And for Teresa and I, it got kind of difficult because we had four young kids with us. It was our four older children. Giselle was two years old at the time. And then we were looking for a, a, a church within our community, a lot closer to home. And so we found one, New Hope uh, Mililani, opened up in Wahiwa Middle School. Go figure, yeah? And so we, we saw the sign, and it was like, hey, we saw a whole bunch of New Hopes popping up. So, you know, we knew that they were contemporary. We knew that they were relevant and all, this, all these wonderful things. And so we decided to go check it out. And so we did one morning, and uh, we loved it. Right? The Filipino pastor, he was funny because he told a lot of jokes, right? So that appealed to me, right? And then the worship team, you know, they, in all honesty, they needed a little bit of work, okay? And so, but, you know, hey, we were willing to look past that, right? Because it's all about worshiping the Lord, right? And so we were in the congregation just kind of enjoying the whole service. And then um, when they were singing the songs, we knew the songs, so we would sing out loud, you know, so on and so forth. Sister Mona over here, Pastor Mona over here, sat behind us, or she was strategically placed behind us, I think. And, and, and all of a sudden, there was word, you know, Pastor Mike came out and said, hey, you know, we, we know that you guys can sing, 
you know, uh, what's up with that, you know, and, and all these kinds of things. But then, you know, Pastor Mike, his first intention was because when he found out that we had four kids, right, he was going to put us in charge of the children's ark, <laughs> right? And that would have been a, a terrible mistake. <laughs> so, but anyway, and so the <laughs> there was an event that came up, and I remember Pastor Mike calling up Teresa and said, hey, would you be willing to sing for this particular event? And of course, you know, Teresa and I, we had a conversation and we said, you know, that, yeah, you know, let's, let's, let's go for it. You know, our, our pastor is, uh, is inviting us to, to worship with them, um, do it. You know, so I was in support of Teresa. And then uh, Teresa, you know, long story short, said, hey, you know, my, my husband plays guitar. Can he get involved as well? And so we did. And so we began um, organizing a weekly worship rehearsal that still goes on today. Every Tuesday nights for 14 years now. Amen. But we knew the significance of what Jesus Christ did in our lives. Amen. And of course, we wanted to be a part of a team. We wanted to be a part of a team that honored God, that, that glorified Jesus. And Pastor Mike, Sister Mona are awesome at that, brothers and sisters. You're going to be, yeah, let's give them a hand clap as we invite them up this morning. Brothers and sisters, our very own senior pastor, Michael Palumpo. Uh, thank you, Pastor Glenn and Pastor Teresa and the whole team. Oh, thank you so much. Well, it's always great to be here with you guys. I feel so at home, and uh, you guys have such a wonderful sense of the presence of the Lord here. I mean, it is, it is, it is visceral. It's detectable. I can just feel. Uh, just the Holy Spirit's peace and the joy and the love. You have such a wonderful, wonderful fellowship. And uh, really, it starts um, at the top here with Pastor Glenn and Pastor Teresa and, the, and their family and the whole team. The, the, um, the culture that they establish is so wonderful. And uh, Glenn, I, I totally remember that time. Uh, you know, when Mona was like, you know, kind of sitting next to the, this new family that had come to church. And she told me, hey, these guys can sing, you know, and you obviously need help on your worship team. So why don't you go ask them if they'll help you? And, uh, you know, what that says to me, and, and this is an, hopefully an encouragement to you, is uh, that, you know, shepherds, pastors, they will see something, maybe not perfectly, but they'll see something in you. And I hope that you will feel like, not like, oh, oh, no, not me, not me. And, uh, you know, we may make a mistake, like accidentally put you in the children's ministry. And you don't belong there, you know. But we'll fix that. I mean, that'll, that, will, that kind of stuff can be fixed. So often when people jump in the ministry, they'll start somewhere, but they may not necessarily stay there. They'll just, you know, move on to the next ministry. And you just keep going until the Lord puts you in the sweet spot. Amen. And you'll, you'll know that you're in the sweet spot of your ministry or where you want to serve the Lord because it'll be a place where, you know, you don't feel tired doing it. You feel so, you so, you feel so fulfilled and, and your spirit just overflowing as you do it. And the next week, you can't wait to go back and do it again. And so you'll, you'll know that you're operating your gifts, you're good at it, and that's what we're here for. We're, it's the total, I don't, I don't know what, what your church experience has been like, but we certainly don't want to put people where just because we need to put a warm body in there, you know, uh, to do something. Uh, that's a horrible way to do church. We, we like to do church led by the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit has to put gifts and put passion and put like abilities in you to do what he the, the, the reason that you were born. Does that make sense? This is the reason why you are brought into this world is to do this thing. And that's what we uh, at, on the pastoral staff um, pray for each of you. And that's our heart. Well, I'm also really excited. Rich, you're doing the Transformation Academy registration over there. Can I just say a quick word about that? We are so excited about this new initiative that, that the Holy Spirit has just birthed in us because we know that as as amazing as church is on Sunday, how many of us know we're not going to get to all the critical issues of following Jesus and being filled with the Holy Spirit and, you know, and, and all the things that the Bible talks about in terms of you know, being the temple of the Holy Spirit 
We're not going to get in on, into all of that on Sunday morning. Does that make sense? Can't do it, not 90 minutes. So the Lord said, hey, I um, want you to, to reestablish the Transformation Academy. So it's been rebirthed. And it's based now, it, it's taken a whole new form. Because uh, we used to have it a long, long time ago. But it's based now today on us being the temple of the Holy Spirit. And what we're saying there is that, you know, you bring the natural, he brings the super, and that makes you what? Supernatural. Yeah. You bring the ordinary, he brings the extra, that makes you what? Extraordinary. Yeah. You bring the bottle, he brings the lightning, that makes you what? Lightning in a bottle. Exactly. And that is like basically the a summary of, of a new book that I'm writing, which will come out in the fall, that will explain what the Transformation Academy is and what our whole church is about. But we're already um, putting together some classes for this, and so I hope that you'll sign up for one of these classes. Amen? Well, uh, since I'm here, I also wanted to just share some really, really great news. It has taken us uh, 16 years to make this announcement, but... Um, Let's see. Uh, we got a few shots of uh, of me like signing something. Okay, there I am. I'm doing some. I'm doing something here. What 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 am I doing? Okay, we go to the next one. I'm smiling. I got a big smile on my face. All right. And the reason is we now own property in Milani. So congratulations. I I signed the. Uh, I think we got a shot of the next thing here. That's that is the title. Okay, so I went over to Title Guarantee and uh, this escrow, you know, signing papers, just like you would do when you, when you buy a house, right? And uh, so um, we are now the proud owners of uh, an acre and a half in Milani Malka, which is where we're going to put uh, the headquarters, you know, of New Hope. taking us 16 years to get to this point, so praise God. But I don't feel so bad because I heard that Rick Warren in California took him 17 years to get property. So we beat him by a year. And the reason is because the Lord blessed us with this property. So in other words, um, there's someone in the church that gave a gift to purchase this property from Castle and Cook. So it was really from the Lord. And um, how many of us were praying that for the Haliva campus as well? Amen. Yeah, that same exact blessing. So, you know, uh, there's no way that you can stay in a cafeteria forever. You can't. You know, um, besides, the government is kind of less and less inclined to let us stay in cafeterias anyway. So, uh, be praying for that. Be praying for that. So, talk to people that you know and, and so forth. And watch how the Lord works. We're praying the same thing for the Wahiwa campus. But you guys started in 2011, so you're only in year four. Don't, there's no pressure, okay? So, don't... It's got a long way to go, a long way to go. So how are we doing in terms of our capital campaign? And thank you guys for participating in this with us. Uh, I, I know that many of us live right here in Haleiwa. And so, uh, you know, I don't know how uh, much opportunity you'll get to actually go over to Milani and be a part of what happens at headquarters. I hope you do, uh, that you'll have some occasion to go to classes, um, that you'll go to conferences or other things that we do. Um, but uh, it's like, you know, the first, the first headquarters, and, and then later on we'll spread out to more. But uh, we're trying to raise $4 million, and at this point, we're at this point. So we're, we've, we've raised about over half a million in pledges, and the amount of contributions, we're just starting, the amount of contributions that has come, that's come in so far is 134438 So give the Lord a big hand. Praise God. Awesome. Okay. <clears throat> All right, but our goal is $4 million, so we've got a, a ways to go. And that's the property over there. If, if you know Minolani at all, that's Lehiva out in front of it there. And then over to the left, uh, down the road this way, to the left is Minolani Middle School. No, you can, go ahead, and you can show that other one there. And then uh, that's it right there. So it used to be something else, uh, stormwater quality basin. But, um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's antiquated. They want to use it for something else now. So they said, hey, you guys can have it. So if, if, you, if you're in the area, on June 16th, there is a uh, neighborhood board meeting where we have to bring this project up to the neighborhood board and, um, you know, talk about it, you know, with them. And this is where all the neighbors in that area get to come out and, 
you know, and tell us how they feel about it, <laughs> how they feel about us being in the neighborhood. So we want to get as many people out there that are like for it, like, yeah, yeah, we're totally for this, you know, uh, as much as possible so that we're not outnumbered by people who every now and then they'll get a person that you know, doesn't like anything, you know. So, um, all right. So keep praying. Uh, thank you for all that you're giving. If you haven't started giving yet, um, you know, start today. And uh, so thank you all so much for for what God is doing in our midst. Amen. It's really, 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 really amazing. So, all right. So from there, uh, I'd like to now transition uh, into today's message. And uh, it is about family. This is, we're in a series called Explicit Family. We'll explain that a little bit more, uh, a little bit later on. But I just want you to, to just feel some confidence that more, this morning that, you know, they brought the old man into the house, you know. So... Um, we're, we're, we're going to be listening to the voice of experience here this morning, you know. So Mona and I have been married for 32 years. Now, um, I know, you know, uh, Mr. Bader and, you know, Judy have probably been married longer than that. And, and maybe there's a few others that have been married longer than that. But there won't be too many, right? Maybe Carl Marine. How long have you guys been married? 35, okay. And, and Mr. Bader, how long have you guys been married? 57 years. So 57, 35. So hopefully they, they'll confirm everything that we're saying this morning. Okay. Anybody been married any, any longer than 57 or 35 years? Okay. So we, we three are the voice of experience in here. All right. So um, in fact, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, uh, I was driving with Caleb. Caleb, you know, is my son, youngest son, 16 years old, right? And we're driving in my car, you know, which is the Monte Carlo, right? The Batmobile. And um, we got the radio on, and you know, when he's in the car, we listen to his stations. You know, does that make you know what I'm talking about, right? So, you know, in the, in the car, you know, we're listening, uptown, funk you up, uptown, funk you up. <laughs> Say what? Uptown, funk you up. And, uh, you know, I mean, I don't mind it, you know. So the two of us, were, you know, we're, we're dancing, you know, in the car, you know. Uptown, funk you up. Uptown, funk you up. Uptown, funk you up. And we're dancing, and we're stopped at this light. And we didn't know that one of his classmates was watching us <laughs> in, in the car. Two of us, you know, like, you know, just booging down, you know, in the car. Well, the next day, this, this classmate, a girl, comes up to Caleb and says, Hey, Caleb, I saw you dancing in the car. You were dancing with your grandpa, yeah? <laughs> saw you dancing with your grandpa. No, not, not grandpa. It was dad. Okay. But anyway, you see what I mean? Voice of experience, right? So uh, we're going to begin uh, with uh, Mona sharing a little something. And uh, we'll just let the Holy Spirit just impress upon her what she'd like to share about marriage. Uh, she's been my best friend for 32 years, the love of my life. And uh, thanks to Jesus, um, we have the most wonderful relationship. I mean, it is really, really awesome. And we... We're, we're very, like, um, aware of what God is doing in our lives to, to keep us very, very close to one another. Because we realize that if something, you know, goes on between us, that's going to affect the entire church, right? So we can't think of just ourselves. We think of all of you, and we think of all the campuses, and we think of everyone that, that looks to us as, as an example. Not that we feel pressure by that. I mean, it's, not, it's not a pressure thing. Does that make sense? It's just an awareness of what God has done to, um, to put us in this position where we get to be an example of his will for people. Does that make sense? Of, of the blessing that he has for, for all of us if we choose to live this way. So anyway, just by the grace of God, uh, my, my best friend for, for 32 years. Give her a big hand. The first lady, Mona, come on up. <clears throat> take your time. Mike said, take my time. Okay. <laughs> I was looking at the time and I was saying, oh, good thing there's only one service, right? <laughs> Okay, well, it is, it's really great to be here. I, 
I just can't get over the ambiance. Being a woman, you know, that's what we look at. You know, we look at all the things. And I see the detail in everything. And I see that that's love. That's really love that's exuding from this body of Christ for the community and for one another. Well, I am... Um, blessed to be here today. Mike wanted me, well today's message is really on husbands and wives and I think his topic is on how we're going from a happy marriage, that's not the goal, but a holy marriage. And that we're also very missional as a couple. And so um, prayerfully I'll be able to share from testimony um, what that's all about. But I wanted to read a passage of scripture and I brought up my iPhone because it has it in the message version that I really liked, and it's from Ephesians 5, and it says, you can just listen. It says, wives, understand and support your husbands in ways that show your support to Christ. The husband provides leadership to his wife the way Christ does to his church, not by domineering, but by cherishing. So just as the church submits to Christ as he exercises such leadership, wives should likewise submit to their husbands. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church, a love marked by giving, not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. I thought that was really profound, that Christ's love makes the church whole. Um, husbands, you are like Christ. If you love her and you cherish her, she will be made whole. Um, Let's see. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her, dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant in holiness. And that's exactly what the message is today, that we're going from a happy marriage. That's not just the goal, but a holy marriage. Um, and that is how husbands ought to love their wives. They're really doing something themselves. They're really doing themselves a favor since they're already one in marriage. So husbands, as you desire this for your wife and you live this out for your wife, what you'll find is you will receive the blessing from that because you are one. We, Mike and I really don't see ourselves as separate. As I was um, thinking about today and what to share, it, it really is quite easy for me to share my journey and my testimony um, with my relationship with Mike. I can stand here and say that I do feel that because of Mike's covering and because of the way he loves me, cherishes me, and has treated me, a broken person, I have become holy in the Lord. Um, but you know, as I was praying about this, I was telling Mike, my sense, my strong sense was not to share our journey, but um, it's actually my brother's journey. I, I don't know if any of you know this, or I know some of you do, but on April 21st, just a few weeks ago, I lost my brother to cancer. And um, he was only 52 years old. And it was a beautiful journey that I got to see unfold. And I really believe that this is, the, his marriage is the testimony of today's message. You see, back in 2002, um, Randall and Edwina um, moved in together. They were not, uh, my brother was a believer, a backslidden believer, but my Edwina moved to Maui where um, my family's from and they decided to live together, although my brother knew that that wasn't the best of God's plan. Um, interestingly, just prior to her moving, my father had a major heart attack and died in our house. And so she comes here and there's this immense fear of death. And she doesn't want to come into our home for the longest time because of this fear. So that's how their relationship starts out. They thought that they would have a happy relationship because they did love one another, um, but trying to do it their own way. And what they realized as years went on that this happy marriage, I mean relationship, was not so happy because it was based on um, two broken people trying to look at each other to fix one another and bring out the best in each other. So as time goes on, whenever I go home to Maui, my brother's sharing with me all of his hurts and his resentments and all of that concerning his girlfriend. And, um, you know, I keep, I keep pointing him to the Lord and he knows that that would be the best way, but he just doesn't have this, he didn't surrender at that point. 
Well, as time goes on, he eventually has a co-worker that leads, invites him to church. He's a bivocational pastor, so he worked with my brother at Maui Prince Hotel, and he also pastored. So eventually, Randall shared with Edwina, you know what, I feel led to go to church again. And Edwina was not that open, because she was totally an unbeliever, but um, so he started to go on his own. As time went on, she saw, you know what, I'll go with you, so they went together. And they continued to live the way they lived, but now they were going to church. As time went on, Randall said, you know what, the men are having a Bible study. I, I, I'd like to go. So he goes, but Edwina's not ready. She does not want to share any of her feelings with the women or her experiences. So Randall continues to go. But eventually, Edwina, she comes to Christ, and she starts meeting with the women. And what's beautiful is, you slowly see them being washed by the word of God. Very slow process, but they're being washed by the word. Three years ago, they, came, they always knew that they were not living right. But I guess they had become comfortable with the fear of getting married. I'm not sure. But finally, Randall took leadership. And he said, you know what? We need to get married. We need to do this right. And so that's exactly what they did. And I saw this broken relationship becoming healed and becoming holy as they chose to do the right thing even in their own daily lives they were now reading the word together and reading the word on their own and making some really powerful changes in their lives you know things that they didn't think anything about prior like what they watched what they listened to how they interacted with each other and with others they became very mindful and the holy spirit was convicting them and challenging them to be made holy and um, so that was a beautiful journey that i saw unfold well in september of 2014 so just seven months ago my brother was diagnosed with esophageal cancer and that was a journey that i wondered how this was going to play out between the two of them. It was so beautiful. Randall um, saw his need even more for the Lord, and he had come up for prayer and um, was so obedient in his desire to seek God in all of this. Um, and what was beautiful was Edwina was right there with him. She didn't fear. She didn't um, cower back. But together they prayed and they um, helped just held this faith to the very end that God could and would heal him. Um, as the days progressed, as the months progressed, Randall was in pain. And just about a month ago, he landed in the hospital for his one final time. And during that whole time, Edwina was so strong in the Lord. She never cowered back. She continued to read scripture to Randall. They continued to pray. And sometimes Randall would tell me, when Edwina prays, I mean, I sensed the power of God. And I could just see how God was making this relationship so holy. And they had really desired that when he got healed, that they would minister to people together. And it wasn't until Randall's death that people were coming over to the house and co-workers were telling us, you know, when I was down or when my wife was hurting, Randall would come and he would pray for me at work. You know, so many people shared that testimony. Well, the last few weeks, um, it got really difficult. I mean, Randall was throwing up this black bile, and it was just unsightly. And he had told the nurses, because remembering Edwina's fear of death years ago when my father had died, he told the nurses, please don't let me go home. Let me die here in the hospital, because I don't want my wife to be afraid. And... Um, when Edwina caught wind of that, she said, oh no, you're coming home. And so she brought, they brought a hospice bed for him. And she tirelessly, because she knows Randall, that he's so, he was a neat freak. He didn't like anything on, on his, you know, like spilled, you know, he would change his shirt, whatever. But every time he, he vomited that bile and it got on his clothes, on his sheet, she tirelessly, lifted him up and would change the sheets and change his clothes and my sister was a witness to that and in the last two days prior to dying she hadn't even slept and i said edwina how are you doing and she said i'm so at peace 
I'm so at peace with God. And so was Randall. To the very end, he kept saying, Mona, I love Jesus. I just love him so much. And you could see the two of them knitted together in this journey. And um, on the last day, Tuesday, I rushed home to Maui. And I was with her. And she was tired. But she had to be so aware of how she injected his medication. She had to be so clear-minded. And I said, Edwina, tonight you go to sleep and I'll watch him all night long. And so it was about 10.30, she went to take a shower. And my brother and I were talking and five minutes into her showering, I saw Randall cough up and my brother and I pulled him up and he released some bile and I saw him take his last breath. And at that point, I had to tell Edwina that Randall had passed away. And in my mind, it was, Randall, God gave you the desires of your heart. You didn't want Edwina to witness this. And she, she was so, um, so thankful f to God that now he was with, her, with him. And there, there was a person that came, a hospice person that came, and I noticed Edwina was in the corner, and the two of us, were the nurse and I were talking as we waited for the mortuary to come. And the next morning, when the mortuary came, they said, Mrs. Waki, we will let you stay as long as you need to with your husband. And she said, oh no, this is just a shell. My husband is with the Lord. You may take him now. And I was so surprised by that. But, you know, I saw this confidence in her. Well, the next morning as we were together, she shared with me, she said, Mona, you know, I don't get visions very often. But she said, this is what I saw. As you and Shannon were talking in the corner, I saw Randall dressed in white. And his hands were like this, and his eyes were closed, and he was looking up. And it was this bright light, and it was like he was taking in his new environment in heaven. And she said, that's all I needed to see. And I am so thankful that I know he's with the Lord. And he told me before I, he died that, Edwina, you're going to be strong and you're going to move forward and you're going to help people. And she said, I am, I'm ready to do the Lord's will. And so as this whole process has continued, doing the funeral, preparing for all of that, she has been so prayerful, so holy, and so um, pleasing to the Lord. And I saw this journey go from being trying to be happy to truly becoming holy in Christ. And um, what a testimony that was for me. And I believe she'll be very missional in her life. So thank you very much for this time. Thank you so much, Bon. You know, um, the, the thing about Randall and Edwina, uh, even though they were going through this very, very difficult season in their lives, this was the point when they were the strongest in the Lord that I have seen them. I um, mean, they, you know, they started off far from Jesus, didn't know the Lord, you know, like Mona was saying, living together, living for themselves. And then the Lord got a hold of them. And you can see the transformation in their life. And praise God, because how many of us know that the, you know, the mortality rate for human beings is still hovering about 100%, right? So we all have to be ready. We all need to be ready for what's coming next. And that's, that's the way that I like us to, to see this message on marriage and the series on family is we're talking about families, we're talking about couples who have a vision for what's coming next and not, not just the... The, the temporary things of this world. So let me just go through a few points with this. Go ahead, take your notes out. And um, first, I want you to see a definition of explicit. All right? It means clearly and in detail, leaving no room for confusion or doubt. So last week was awesome, right? Mother's Day, a wonderful um, message on the legacy of moms. Like just clear, clear. This is what moms are shooting for. The way their children live, 
will honor them for the rest of their lives. So that's, that's the explicit message to moms, to parents, really. Well, today, we want to be just as explicit, just as clear about married couples. How many of us know that everyone is going to leave a legacy? Whether you are aware of it or not, you are leaving a legacy. Now, what's a legacy? Is there, is there a slide with a definition of legacy on there? No? Essentially, it is, there it is, something from the past that is handed down or remains from a previous generation or time. So you are, the way you are living right now, just like we talked about last week, okay? The way you're living right now, you are leaving a legacy for those that come after you. Now, the question is, what kind of legacy is that? Whether it's good or bad, you're leaving one. So we want to be intentional about the kind of legacy we're going to leave behind. Amen? Especially in marriages. Now, okay, now with regard to marriage, let me just ask you a couple of questions, all right? Um, first of all, is there anyone in the room, just by a show of hands, you feel like, I, I just am so happy single the way I am, and I just believe that God... Um, it just designed me to be single for the rest of my life, and I'm totally happy the way I am right now. Anyone like that? Anyone like that today? Okay. Nobody. All right. <laughs> okay. Now, um, how many of us are married? Raise your hand. Okay. So uh, this, this message has uh, obvious implications for you, right? Now, for those of you that haven't raised your hand, uh, since I asked if anyone feels like totally happy just being single for the rest of your life, right? And we just saw the hands of everyone that got married. So those of you that didn't raise your hand, no pressure, okay? No pressure. But there is only one other option for you, all right? And that is get ready because at some point in the future, um, the Lord's probably going to arrange for you to be married to someone, is that a little scary? <laughs> I, I, I tell this to my class at the college, and they're all single in my class. I said, how many of you feel like you want to be single the rest of your life? Nobody raises their hand, right? I said, well, you, then you only have one other option, and that is get yourself ready. Prepare yourself. Anticipate that you'll be married. So this message is not just for the, the married couples. It's for all of us that are thinking about marriage and God's plan for marriage. Amen? And like I said, the legacy that you will one day leave behind. Now, what I'm saying here is, how many of us know that marriage is, is not eternal? I, I know that that may sound a little bit sad, but Mona and I are not going to be married forever and ever into eternity. Um, it's till death do we part. That's what the Bible says. So, praise God, we will be together until the end of this life. But in the next life, uh, there won't be any marriage. Now, it doesn't mean that there won't be love, right? So God is love, and there's going to be all kinds of love in heaven, but no one will be married in heaven. So marriage is only for this world and for this existence. But here's the thing. Too many people spend their whole lives preparing for and living toward the last 10 years of their life rather than the first 10 million years of eternity. Does that make sense? So, you know, we're all about, yeah, I want to live happily ever after, like all the Disney movies, you know, and oh, I, I'd like my marriage to, to be good. That's good. That's awesome. All right? But the way to do that is actually to prepare for the next 10 million, 10 billion years that you will live on in eternity. So, a marriage that's grounded in eternity or rooted in what's to come, that's the vision that we have for us this morning. Okay, now, so, there's some key areas in which we need to shift our focus now, and um, there's going to be two ways that we're going to shift our focus. How many of us know that it's super important to, to, to know what it is that you should focus on, Right? So, um, you know, Rachel and I were driving from the north, in the car again. We were driving from the North Shore. And we're pretty much stopped at this light. And then suddenly we just hear, like, screeching behind us. We're stopped at the light. And we hear, and then, bang, 
bang, and then bang again, and then the car behind us hit us. We were stopped. And um, I, I don't have absolute proof of this, but I think that the person, because the individual came out and they were like holding their cell phone in their hand, you know, so do you know what I think happened? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, what, I, that's what I think too, but I, I didn't want to go there. I, just, oh, I hope that's not the case. But um, if you're driving, no texting, right? Yeah, because focus is really important. How many of us know if you're, you know, you're, you're going like 50 miles an hour, you know, uh, down the road or 45, 45 miles per hour, you, you can go super far in one second. In one second, boom, you can go like so far and uh, stuff can happen. So focus is really important. We don't want to lose focus. We want to make sure our focus is good. Now, typically, um, we tend to think of marriage as something that's supposed to make us happy. But like Mona was trying to share this morning, the key to that is, right in your notes, is to pursue holiness before happiness. So, in Matthew 22, here's that passage that I was telling you a little bit uh, earlier about how marriage is not permanent, right? It says, in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. Okay? So, the key focus of our life is really our relationship with God. That's got to be first. Now, if you make your own personal happiness, this is going to sound a little hard, but hey, we're being explicit this morning, right? We're being explicit. So if you make your own happiness or even your marriage your greatest focus in life, your highest priority in life, what did you just do? You made that thing your what? Your idol. Exactly. That means that you made it God. Now, I know that some of us are married to some pretty amazing people in this room, but they're not God. <laughs> right? Okay, yeah, exactly. And to expect from them, to have an expectation that they're going to be like God to you, your idol, the source of your happiness, you just set yourself up for what? Huge disappointment. Exactly. It's not because your spouse is not wonderful. They're just human beings like you. And are you perfect? No. You're two imperfect people. But what happens to us is we make this mistake of thinking that, oh, this is going to be forever. And the Lord says, no, it's not going to be forever. It will come to an end. Right? But I'll tell you what's forever. I'm forever. God says, put your focus on me. I'm the one who should be your number one priority in your life. Now, if you look at Matthew uh, 10 down here, we know that it says, in Matthew 22, he says, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then it says in Matthew 10, I don't know if you have this, but it says, whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Wow. Okay. Now, we all know how much we love our children, but who comes first? Yeah. Yeah. Now, it says in Luke 14, 26, right? I love the explicit series. This just like tells it straight up, right? Look at this. This is Jesus once again. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Now, is Jesus telling us to hate our... No, he, he, just, he just got done saying, love God with everything you have, love your neighbor as yourself, love everyone, love, love, love. But what he's saying is, our love for him is in a totally different category from every other human relationship. Does that make sense? He's saying that the two are not even in the same league. So for many of us, we often think of our priorities as, you know, uh, God, family, you know, church, friends, work. Do you have this uh, slide? It usually looks like something like this. 
God, family, friends, work, possessions, you know, maybe church is in there after family or something like that. And God is like one of the top things, you know, the top thing on our list. But in reality, it should look like that. There's God. Amen? There's God. And he's in a category all by himself. And we are committed to him and love him. Uh, with such devotion and so much commitment that in comparison to everything else in our lives, it, it almost looks like we're, we're, we're almost like in disdain of those other things. But we're not. We're not. We're just, we're just saying that our love for God is like the foundation. It's the overarching thing in our lives. Now, that may sound a little bit hard, like, yeah, but what about our family? What about the, the important people in our lives? Listen, God knows what he's doing, amen? Does God know what he's doing? All right, he does. So he's telling you this for what reason? So that you will hate your family? and so, No. He's telling you this because if you want to love your spouse properly, you need to love him more than anything else. You need to put him first. If you want to love your children in the right way, in the healthiest way, in the most spiritual way, then you need to put him as your top focus in your life. Because when you love the Lord and you know his love for you, what's going to happen? You are going to be able to, in the most healthiest, most spiritual most wonderful way, love the other people in your life. Because what happens to us is without God first in our lives, without holiness first, that holiness means we're set apart for him first and foremost. Yes? So we're set apart for him first and foremost. Without that, we're actually not going to experience the fulfillment, yes, the happiness that he wants us to have in life, that he wants to bless us with. Isn't it interesting? It's, 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 the, it's the weirdest thing because in the world, they say, here's what, how many of us can see that society is in just a turmoil right now? Can you see that? Anyone else see that besides me? Right? Today at baptism, watch, I'm going to wear a shirt and, and it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a shirt that, that's an Arabic letter the, the letter Noon, which means Nazrani, which means Christian. And I want to wear it because I know that Kurt's going to put all our pictures up on Facebook. <laughs> Make sure I look good, all right, Kurt? Uh, take a good picture of me, you know, nothing wrong with a weird expression on it. You know. But anyway, um, I want to have that shirt. That's the shirt that ISIS is putting on the doors and on the, on the doorposts and on the walls of Christian homes. And they mark Christian homes like that because their intention later on is to come back in and kill that family. So that's, that's what that shirt means. So in, in that, when I say, as you see the shirt, I don't know if I'll explain it today, but as you see the shirt, it is our solidarity with all the murders that are happening in the world today. The world's in a crazy place, right? Now, the reason I bring this up is because all these people who, who think like the world does, I'll tell you what they do. They believe that the problem is not them. The problem is out there. They believe that the problem is the Christians, so I'm going to kill all the Christians, and then I can be the kind of Muslim that I'm supposed to be. You see what I'm saying? You, do, you, do you see that, that, uh, that people who are living in the inner city, right? Like you see the Baltimore riots and stuff like that. Do you know who, who they hold responsible for the situation that they're in? The system. It is the government's fault. It is the political leader's fault that they're in a situ situation that they're in. So the problem is always out there. You see? So the world always thinks like that. The problem is always global warming. That's the problem. Okay? Or the, it's, it's corporate America. Or it's big tobacco. Or it's the church. They're the problem. The, it's always out there. Did you notice that? But what does the Lord say? I'll tell you what the biggest problem is. The problem is in here. Our biggest problem is ourselves. It's in here. Now, if you, if you take that philosophy of the world into your marriage 
and you say, this is what people do. They say, you're supposed to make me happy. They tell their spouse. You know, I've seen this so many, so many times in counseling. You're supposed to make me happy, and I'm not happy in this relationship. So it's your fault. It's your fault that I'm not a good wife, or it's your fault that I'm not a good husband. It's your fault. You're supposed to make me happy, and you're not. You're failing as a spouse. But the problem is really what? You. Now, we're not saying that spouses are perfect. But how many of us know you can't change them, right? You're not going to be able to change other people. You can only allow the Lord to change who? You. Exactly. And we, all, we already have a big enough problem just doing that. <laughs> right? Never mind trying to change somebody else. You see? So that's why we say the goal, the focus has got to be holiness. Holiness. Not your happiness. Because happiness, you think, is supposed to come from another person and they're supposed to make you happy. No, they're not. Right? You live in a right relationship with God, just like Randall and Edwina learned how to do. And the result is, they both became happy in Jesus. Does that make sense? So the people who go after happiness as their focus end up unhappy, unfulfilled, very sad, maybe even divorced. I don't know. You know. But the people who say, no, God, He is my focus. He is the Lord of my life. And I believe in Him. And as a result, I know that he's trying to transform me first. And as a result of me being transformed, then I, here it is, then maybe I can be a good husband to my wife. Then I can allow the Lord to work through me to bless her. And I will be a blessing to her. I'm not expecting something from her to me. Now, so let, me let me show you this love triangle. I know that sounds bad, but we have it up there? Okay. So we got the emojis. Wait a minute. Uh, we got the iPhone update. There you go. Okay, yeah. So uh, we got the iPhone update. Now we got the uh, uh, whatever Asian emojis or something. Anyway, so uh, <clears throat> at first in the marriage, you're looking at each other. This is straight out of chapter 11 in my book, Shameless Plug, God Things, you know, Encounters of Jesus, the Transformers. I wrote that book in 2011. So, But this is from chapter 11. And what happens to us is in marriage, we tend to think, you are supposed to make me happy. And we point to the other person, you, you make me happy. That actually drives you apart. So you see how far apart they are, right? But now when God comes into the picture, there's Jesus up there, all right? Now, both husband and wife focus their attention upon who? On the Lord, not the other person. Not, it's not like, hey, you, my wife, you're supposed to keep me, the husband, happy and content, and, and satisfied, and cook my meals, and do everything I say. That's what's going to make me happy in this life. No, it's not. She, she can't do that for you. No one can do that for you. Only God can bring that contentment into your life. So now, both the husband and the wife are focused on the Lord. This is what you're contending for. Now, as a result of the two of them focused on the Lord, guess what? As they both draw closer to the Lord, they draw closer to who? Each other. Look at that. And now when they're like very, very close to the Lord, look how close they are to one another. This is the key to the relationship between Mona and myself. We both keep our attention on the Lord. And then the Lord says to me, now love your wife. And the Lord says to her, now love your husband. Because you love me, now love him properly. Mike, because you love me, now love her properly. Now, how many of us, uh, have you ever uh, shared with you the 100-0 marriage? You remember this? The 100-0 marriage? Right? Because be before, we used to think of marriage in terms of a contract. Right? Not a covenant. What's a contract and what's a covenant? A contract is 50-50. Right? So a contract is, you do this for me, I do this for you. So I do this for you, then you meet me halfway, and then you do this for me. Now, is that what Jesus did on the cross? That's not what he did on the cross, right? It says in Romans 5 that while we were still his enemies, Jesus died for us. So while you were still, and while we, in fact, we weren't even born yet, okay? So while we were very far apart from God, 
Jesus what? Now, the, on the cross, does he say, okay, um, I will allow the Romans to whip me first, but I, I need you to, to see that I'm being whipped for you, okay? So I'm, being, I'm taking the beating for you. I'm, now, you need to see that. Now, you need to come and meet me halfway here. And then if, if, I, if I do that, then I'll go to the cross and die for your sin. But if I don't see a response from you, I am not going to the cross. Is that what Jesus said? That is not what he said, right? So Jesus goes all the way, 100%, to the cross, and he dies for the church before the church ever loved him. This is, this is called a covenant. A covenant means I am 100% committed to you. And listen, I expect zero in return. I, I, can't, I can't make you. I can't decide anything for you. That's on you. But I'm, I'm in it 100%. But as for you, that's your choice, whether if you want to be 100% or not. This is a covenant. And, and, and covenantal marriage is where you have two people who are doing that. Pretty awesome, right? So I'm 100% committed to Moda. She's 100% committed to me, to me. And as far as expectations on each other, we just we try to let, let those go a little easy. All right? Because we're still kind of in process too. So I'm not doing everything perfectly and she's not either. Now how many of us know that before you get married, you go in with both eyes open, right? But after you get married, keep one eye shut. <laughs> yeah, but the, the idea though is to say, I'm 100% committed to you for the rest of my life. She says the same, the same thing for me. It's not conditional. There is no like, but you got to do this. No, it's not, that's not there. Now that's, that's something to shoot for, amen? That's holiness versus happiness. And as a result... You, you've guessed it. What kind of marriage does that result in? A very, very happy marriage. Very, very happy. Very fulfilling. Not perfect, all right, but super fulfilling. Very, very happy. So you, you want this to happen in, in your life. The two of you, the, both husband and wife, you, you need to get with Jesus. That's the most important thing. You, both of you need to focus your attention on the Lord. Now, just for a few seconds or a few minutes, and I can't promise seconds, but uh, number two, mission, not simply marriage. Pursue mission, not simply marriage. Second Timothy 2, 3, 4, and these pas passages will have kind of a similar uh, idea behind them. Share in the sufferings as good soldiers of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. And then down here, Mark 8, for whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. Now, what do we say about marriage? Does it last forever, never, never, never? No, it does not. Marriage ends at death. Now, here's the thing, though. What if, what if a married couple pursues God with all their heart and serves him in their marriage, in their ministry, in their lives. Now, what, what, this passage, what these pastors are saying is, how many of us know that sometimes when you get into marriage, you can get stuck in the civilian affairs, just caught up in the day-to-day -day life. But what we're trying to contend for here is for married couples together, to serve the Lord and to shoot for something eternal, not just take care of all the civilian stuff and all the things of the, you know, the, the things of the world. In 1 Corinthians 7, it says this. Look, it says, Paul states in verses 29 to 35, that it's actually better for a man or woman to remain unmarried because marriage, it says, makes a person anxious about worldly things and pleasing the other. He says an unmarried person can give undivided devotion to the Lord. So the Bible is explicit that there is a higher calling than marriage at stake. On the other hand, marriage can help us fulfill our mission in, in that it, it, 
we become fulfilled in one another, protected from sexual temptation, so that as a result, now we can serve the Lord. You know, and we're not like all cross-eyed, you know, and crazy. <laughs> so, but the idea is here is this. It's really awesome. And that is that the married couple, the husband and the wife, know that there is something beyond them. There's a, there's a greater, there's a greater uh, goal beyond just their earthly happiness. And they're shooting for that. They're saying, God, I want to serve you. I want to be a part of building your kingdom. And they see the bigger, the bigger picture. They're part of something bigger than just themselves living out their days in this world. Just trying to squeak by and eat by and do their thing and then just die. You know, in closing, um, we've, we've seen a lot of uh, people pass on lately. And uh, I don't mean a lot, I mean like a big numbers, but just it's just been happening uh, a little more frequently than the normal. And, uh, of course, you heard the story of Randall and Edwina, Mona's brother Randall, and how especially towards the end of his life, they both caught that, that vision that, that they belong to Jesus first and foremost, and then through Jesus they love one another. But now the Lord has like a, a mission for them, has a ministry for them. And uh, so it was really awesome to hear how Randall would, uh, you know, be a part of the church and Edwina too. And then uh, even at work, at the workplace, he would even like pray with people and try to help people. And so at the funeral, it was, it was awesome to, to see, you know, brothers and sisters in Christ. Not all of them were, but many brothers and sisters of Christ who had become very close to Randall share, you know, at the funeral about his life and, 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 and how he touched them with his life. Now, that, that was, that's really awesome. The, the Lord, I, I think, in many ways, took him at the, at the very height of his faith when he was the strongest in the Lord. And, um, well, we, we, now it's kind of like, a, uh, we, we don't know what would have happened next now, but the Lord said, this is, this is your time. But he, 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 he left it at such a climactic moment in terms of his relationship with God. And Edwina right now today also is very, very strong in the Lord. And I, I just want to share with you that that's, that's the way we want to go out. Amen? That's the way you want to go out. Um, now, I want to contrast that with someone that I don't, I don't think anyone knows this, this other individual that has passed away very recently. Um, maybe if you're in a prayer ministry, you're praying for him. But he, he told me himself, okay, that he was not really someone who was going to follow the Lord. And um, he was one of these kind of guys, all right? Um, and uh, his wife was sharing with me about this testimony. And he would go to church intentionally late so that he wouldn't have to relate to anyone. And then he would leave intentionally early so that he wouldn't have to talk to anybody. All right? And then in the car on the way home, he would tell his wife, church is not my thing. I'm only going because of you. And every weekend it was like that. Church is not my thing. I'm only going because of you. But praise God for this sister. She just kept on contending and contending, and just saying, okay, you know, hey, okay, come for me. All right, sure, that's fine with me. And, you know, but hey, one of these days, the Lord's going to get a hold of you. And guess what? Like Randall, seven months ago, got a bad report from the doctor. But for him, it was like, okay, God, this is the journey that you have me on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it. I'm going to do this. Let's contend for miracles. Let's, let's go for it. Well, in the same way, this other man got a re bad report from the doctor. And the doctor said, brother, you're terminal. And there is nothing we can do for you. Well, guess what happens to his spiritual life after that? Oh, my goodness. Now, suddenly, it's like, Pastor Mike, I need to talk to you. Oh, really? Okay. Well, you didn't want to talk to me before, but hey, you're here now. Praise God. Okay. This is good. And how many of us know 
that the Lord receives the thief of the cross. Does that make sense? Yeah, he sure does. That, that guy was a thief all his life. Not talking about this other man now, but a thief on the cross. A thief all his life. At the very end, he probably didn't even think that he would go to heaven. He just said, Lord, remember me when you get to heaven, because I know where I'm going. You're going to go to heaven. I'm not. But the Lord said, no, you're coming with me. I extend my grace to you. I see your heart has really changed. Come. Even though it's 11.59 and 59 seconds. And so in the same way, this man caught on fire for Jesus, saw the error of his ways, repented of his sin. Is he with Jesus now? Yes, he is. Because the Lord took him. Just like he takes any last second confession that's from the heart. He'll do that. But listen, why would you want to wait that long? Why on earth would you want to waste your entire life and leave no legacy behind you except the legacy of, I came to Jesus at the last second of my life. <laughs> oh boy, that was a close one. Phew. Why would you want to live that way? Rather, you should live like Randall. Really? You know, amen? It's like, who spent this last decade following Jesus with all his heart, making the biggest difference he can, leaving a legacy that would last forever in the, in the lives of everyone that he touched. So, I feel like this morning is really about a choice, you know. It, you you want to just like, you know, you and your spouse just kind of eat by and just hide and just kind of live forever and then, and then die and then everybody goes, yay, you know, and then we go eat food, you know, uh, you know from the caterer and uh, okay, all right, that's it, you know, good. I think he's in heaven, praise God, okay. Or, in Jesus' name, you can make a difference like right now in the lives of so many people around you, Amen. Let's all stand together for closing prayer. And um, I'd like to do two things with you in prayer this morning. The first is, if you've not come to the Lord yet, we, we, we clearly want to give you an opportunity this morning to put your faith in him. He died for us on the sin. On, uh, died for us on the cross to take away our sin. On the cross, Jesus was taking your sin upon himself so that you would not have to die. He took that penalty for you, so you are saved by grace. And so what we're saying is that by putting your faith in Jesus, your sins are taken away, and you're good. You receive the gift of eternal life, like right now. And it's the beginning of a whole new life for you. And today, if you put your faith in the Lord, and this is your first time, you've never done that before, I, I tell you the truth, you can get baptized today. Go down to the beach, get baptized today. If you put your faith in the Lord today, right? That, that's how instantaneous it is. Oh, don't have to go to some class. No, you put your faith in Jesus and you say yes to Jesus, join us in baptism today. We'll pray for that, number one. The second thing we're going to pray for is, let's say that you're a person who's already a Christian, but you're looking at your legacy right now and you're thinking, Wow, am I really making this count? Or am I just kind of taking it easy? Am I just lying down, you know, waiting for death to come? And today, we pray, will be a turning point for you. It will cause you to rise up and to say, God, today is a new chapter. Today is a new day. And I will live for you with all of my heart. Help me to make a difference in the people around me, in the lives around me. Help me. Help me to, to share you with them, to bless them, to maybe lead a class or a new believers class or grow with NHCO. Or, so I'm going to go to that so I can learn how to do that myself. I, but I want to make my life count. So with every head bowed, let's pray for the first thing. Lord, right now in Jesus' name, for anyone here, who does not know that if they were to die right now, that they would go to heaven. If that's you, would you just by your uplifted hand just say, I want to put my faith on the Lord today. Anyone like that this morning? I'm not sure about my relationship with Him, but right now I want to be sure. And so I'm coming to you right now, Lord. Not going to wait. I'm coming to you right now. Anyone like that this morning? You've not put your faith in the Lord yet, but today... You're coming to Him. In Jesus' name, you receive the free gift of salvation instantaneously. 
right now. Anyone like that? All right. Now, let's pray for the second thing. And that is that, you know, you've come to the Lord. You know Him. But you want to go on a mission for Him in the days that you have. In fact, you're committing yourself as a couple to do this. You're committing yourself like the Rosario family as a family to do this. You're saying, Lord, we put you first. We're separate, separating ourselves unto you. We're consecrating ourselves to you. We're making ourselves holy for your purpose. And we're putting you first, even above our own lives. In fact, Lord, invade our family, invade our marriage so that we become totally dedicated for, to you. And, okay, now, listen. Some of you are thinking, well, I'm going to do that, but my spouse is not here. Listen. Do not wait for your spouse. Some of us are thinking, yeah, I'll wait till my spouse can ca catches on fire and then, and then we'll go together. No, you go first and you stay on fire. You catch on fire and you stay on fire and then you watch how the Lord uses you to influence your spouse. Amen? So, if that's you, if you're that believer, would you raise your hand? Just say, that's me, Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So many. All right. Praise God. Now, before we pray, um, a little earlier I was asking, if you are not married yet, but you know in your heart that that is not God's plan for you for the rest of your life, so you too are saying, God, I consecrate myself wholly to you, dedicate myself fully to you. And I want to pour myself into serving you and following you. Now, I don't have a family yet, but God, this is, this is my heart. If that's you, would you raise your hand? Anyone like that this morning? Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Would you pray this prayer with me this morning? Just say, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, I dedicate myself wholly to you with all my heart, all my soul, with all my strength, with my mind. I dedicate it all to you, Lord for your purpose, for your kingdom. Lead me, God. Fill me to overflowing. Help me to listen to the mentors in my life. To the pastors, to shepherds, to spiritual leaders. Help them to guide me. But most of all, Lord, I will follow you into your plan for me. So transform my life, God. I belong to you. In Jesus' name, all God's children said, amen, amen. Say thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, what a, what a joy it's been for uh, Mona and myself to be with you this morning. I hope that we'll see you at baptism today. Amen. Uh, but uh, if not, um, you know, you'll see us here again like in a few months. We, we kind of make the rounds and we, we just love, we love to visit our New Hope Central Ohio family all over the island. So let's go out with a song and, and worship the Lord. Glory and beauty. And, and we're going to let Cherie sing, not me. So here. <laughs> Let's put our hands together, yeah. Sing with me. 